sometimes a knife just gets it right from the design, the materials, and the performance, and then finally, the name. I'm talking about the Iron Maiden of Bushcraft knives, the Brissa Trooper 115. You take my life, but I'll take yours too. Fire your musket, but I'll run you through. So when you're waiting for the next attack, you better stand, there's no turning back. So guys, I can't wait to break down this blade with you. I've had it for about five months in rotation, gone on many adventures with me, really taking it through its paces and showing you today what the capabilities, what the limitations may be in the design and running in three competitive options. So stick around till the end of the video so you can see what those are and whether or not this stacks up to the competition. So appreciate you guys coming over and spending some time with me today. I'm Aaron, this is Gideon's Tactical. Let's dive in. All right, guys, let's get after it with this blade. The business and sticking it to the woods with this tool. Now, what I love is the blade shape. The blade shape catches me right away. There's almost no drop on that tip, which just gives it a really cool profile. You don't see that often. You get a lot of like spear points in this arena um, or definitely like significant drops. We don't get that with this. Great sweep, great belly portion right there. We're looking at from the handle to the tip about 4.2 for my measurements on the overall blade length, four inches even on the cutting edge, the full tank construction, Right back here by the spine is 0.15 from my measurement and basically holds that all the way to the transition of the tip there. Good, durable tip. Nice tip there, giving you precision but strength to boot, which is really nice to see. You don't always get that with these Scandi knives. Sometimes, you know, it's good. they got like thinner tips because of the Scandi grind itself and that can be a little concerning. Good tip right there. Now that thickness, flows into, it's like a modified Scandi. There is definitely a secondary bevel you guys can see here, right? So it's like a, it's basically a flat grind, but it's it's the it's a micro bevel, not like a large bevel like we may see on some other blades. So in combination with that 0 0.15 being over an eighth, less than 5.30 seconds, what I found, I was a little concerned. I'm like, you know, this is definitely supposed to be, even though it has the name Trooper in it, like, you know, you, I would just view it as like a bushcraft knife that's heavy duty, a heavy duty bushcraft knife, which sometimes is not always high performing. You know, it, it lags. F first off, in the, the feather stick making, look at the bundle that I made with this thing at the end. It was like bananas. The carving capability, guys, is freaking nuts. I was so stoked with the car carving capability. It's just the way... Brissa has like ground this in and done it, dude. I mean, it is, you don't hear me this pump very often. Uh, the, it was so good, guys. It was so much fun to do the Woodscraft finer stuff. So if you wanna make fez, feather sticks, you don't wanna really have to try at it. This thing is gonna do it and bite into wood like a purple people eater. I mean, it is just like, I mean, just like, animal, animal. I mean, it's just like an animal at the, the, the wood. So if you are looking for a knife to gobble up wood's craft tasks, finer notching, like it just eats it up, then obviously doing like utility tasks, no problem, it can easily rope, cordage, all that stuff's gonna just like fly through it. Cardboard, if you'd like using these type of blades in more utility tasks, and again, the concept of like, say a trooper knife maybe, definitely doing more uh, man-made material, easily gobbles it all up, as well as hard-hitting tasks because of how thick the spine is, I'm able to just wail on it and it's going to baton, split wood, explode it in half and you know side split, do the task that you would want a tool like this to do just so well. 90 degree spine on it so you can get those feather sticks, once you like make them, bam, it's gonna like light them up and get them going for you very, very easily. It's a like flamethrower on the back spine there. It's good for scraping whatever other tasks that you would want it to do. Um, food prep, okay. You know, it'll be all right. Definitely meat, it'd be totally fine. Veggies, you're doing like fine cutting. Just because of the, the grind, a full flat is gonna be better. Now, to the steel, which is carbon steel, ADCRV2 steel, which is Swedish saw steel. 
That is another term for it. Been around for a long time. And it's very, I've had it now on about four blades and it's a cool steel. I really like it. Now this is uncoated. That's the one thing you gotta know. Um, you can already see staining on the tip and I'm trying to take care of it as best I can, but you can already see some staining there. Um, and I'm in Colorado, which is extremely dry climate for the most part. So I don't even really know how it got that staining on there. So, you know, you're gonna probably wanna put some form of patina on it if you're in a very humid environment. Now it's extreme, but what ADCR V2 is, is that it is very tough, but because of its toughness, um, usually it wouldn't have as good, like it's tougher than uh, 5160 steel, which is some of like the toughest steel out there. It's a spring steel, 5160. This is tougher than that steel um, when properly heat treated. And I'm from everything I'm seeing, Brissa's totally doing what they should be doing with the heat treat. So there's that fi factor, but then it, even though it's tough, usually that means that the edge isn't that great. The, the edge retention is better than like 1095, 5160, and can oftentimes from um, many people's experiences, like 01, similar to 01 in its edge retention capability. Um, for me, I'm definitely, I, I couldn't tell you like, oh, it's like this type of seal per se in edge retention. It's definitely better than my 1095 blades in edge retention. So that's something that you will absolutely note. And then because it's a high carbon, it is, easy to get like the scariest edge ever on this type of steel. So not much elbow grease and it's able to get such a fine edge on it that that's what makes it so easy to make those insane feather sticks and do what you need to. But because of the toughness, you're not gonna have um, as many edge stability issues if you are pounding on it. It's gonna hold an edge better than some other steels out there because of that toughness to the edge retention ratio. So now a knife like this has to be ergonomic and I'm really pleased with the ergos on this tool. You can see here really contoured well, there's no sharp angles except on the back here, but even that is a little rounded. Um, only on the pommel though is where I really kind of noticed it. Nice flat pommel there, full tank construction all the way through, red liners that pop. Now this is a green micarta you can get a few different colors, I believe, with micarta, and then there is like curly birch, I believe. So depending on your preference, your style, those are available. Two pins, tube lanyard hole out the back. I've got a little ring finger, or excuse me, pinky, so you can get those little wrist flicks in. Uh, just D-limb stuff, you know, that's like the thickness of your pinky. You know, this is not a chopper by any means, it doesn't have the weight for it, not designed for that. But if you need to just, you know, deal in a couple things real quick, that's a good simple little way to do that. Love those pins, no lips anywhere to catch on to. Really well done. A Little bit of scalloping right there up near the front. Now, um, the one thing is that the micarta is like ultra slick. So, I mean, there's almost no texture. As I use it, you can feel ever so slightly the fibers. It would have been nice to maybe have just a slightly less polished feel to it. Um, so it's not bad, but it's definitely like my polished micarta. A little bit of a flare in there, give me enough grip and easily fills out my large size hands with plenty of real estate. Very comfortable to hold in different grips. And even in a more aggressive task, I didn't. F it's not like a puko per se because of that nice cut in right there. Really feels comfortable and I was very pleased just with the, not only just the kind of profile, but just the ergonomics are absolutely there. The only shortcoming would be um, just not much traction. Now it's gonna have a great high quality leather sheath, good stitching all the way through, little tiny drainage hole right there, one rivet. It's kind of like a chocolate on that leather. Holds about two thirds of the handle, so plenty to grab onto and then pull. Tension is light, I would say. So if you're really, you know, wanting to carry this and really want to make it secure, do a little bit of wet molding around it just to really get it nice and secure. But I've never had any issues with, you know, its performance, good thick leather. And nice, large leather loop here. So you can either kind of run it and just, I've done it a few times where I just kind of drop the dangler and then run it through there. You could, you know, just break off. There's a seam on this, um, metal loop. If you like it a little higher ride, if you like the dangler, uh, that is an option. Now it's not a button snap. It would have been nice to have a button snap. We're going to see in competitive options that there is a variant that, uh, an option that does do that. That would have been a nice little touch, not the end of the world, can easily get this on most belts. And I prefer carrying it with the dangler, but um, 
you know, the, the, it's just, you're gonna have to take your belt off, not the end of the world, but it's just a little data point there for you. So excellent leather sheath. To my knowledge, it's only set up for righties. Uh, you could check the Bristol website. There may be variants in the left-hand um, arena. Well guys, now it's time for one of my favorite parts of the video where we're gonna look at competitive options. I got three different other blades, two with ADCRV2, one with Sleipner steel that we're about to look at to help us determine for ourselves, is this the right tool for us to throw in rotation? And I do wanna give a quick shout out to Huckberry and been rocking this Time X Flix reissue of this Ironman triathlon version. I mean, this thing is so sick from 1999. This was like the watch to have. And basically if you're tired of all the smart watches and all the craziness, or you just don't like like Bluetooth energy going through your body, uh, this has so many different features, capabilities, and this is exclusive over to Huckberry and a reissue uh, partnering with Timex. So if you're interested in that, I got links below for you guys to go check out as well as my 10% uh, off promo code for your first purchase that you guys can check out. That'll be in the links as well as links for this blade as well as competitive options that I'm about to run in. I do appreciate Brissa hooking me up with this tool so I should, could show you guys pros, cons, and what its capabilities are. Now this tool usually goes, depending on the handle material you go with, uh, between like 160 and maybe like 180, depending on where you pick it up, particularly here in the States, it's a little bit cheaper over in Europe to my understanding, um, just because, you know, it's made in Finland. So that's not a bad price point for all the materials that we're seeing here as one example. I'm gonna bump that up here. The first one that I wanna run in with ADCRV2 as well is this Raka. I know I'm gonna screw up the handle or the name of it, Corpus Jury. I, I always had a hard, hard time with that. ADCRV2, made in Finland as well. Amazing grind, very similar size. It's actually gonna be even thicker though at 0 0.19 on the spine thickness, 90 degree spine though. I mean, just super well done. Full tank construction all the way through with this um, rubberized handle that's super dense, but gives you a lot of grip. Definitely even more, if this is the trooper, this is like, I don't even know, the assault trooper. I don't know, the dark trooper, there we go, of blades. So this is also gonna run right around that same price point, about 160 on average. Gonna come with a polymer sheath that you can lash all kinds of different, you know, um, lashing things to. It's ambidextrous, very slim. Definitely a little bit more like modern in its materials, but this is gonna perform very similarly to this, but it's even like more tactical because of the glass breaker uh, out the back and just that, you know, like rubberized polymer. So if you like rubberized polymer, but you want this type of steel, that might be a great option. Um, and then here, let's do the other, no, we'll hold off on that. We're gonna do here, I have not even used this yet, but the Brush Lord from Joker, just recently released. I believe this is their first knife with Sleipner steel, skin to grind, 0 0.16 on the thickness full tank construction, pinned in as well, all kinds of different handle material options. A really beautiful blade, 90 degree spine. This is gonna be, I, uh, no, it's about the same. It, look, it feels bigger for some reason, uh, but about the same profile, about the same size right there. Um, leather sheath, dangler. I would argue that this is actually a better leather sheath. It has a couple lashing points, whereas the um, Brissa does not. And it has this like, loop D-ring right there that you can drop this off. You can't do that without like pulling it apart on the Brissa and then it has button snaps. And you can get this like the more streamlined version or you can get this with a matching fire steel. Uh, they're, I don't, I'm guess they're available in the US. It's hard for me to find any information in the US yet on this. I know um, Euros, they're like 130 to 150 which equals out to be about the same price, like 150, 160. Once it becomes readily available, like on Amazon, and a lot of the other distributors, I bet we'll see it for right around the same price again as this Brissa. Now, Sleipner Steel is a semi-stainless, close to, it's in the family of D2, close to A2 steel. Uh, I've used it on a lot of blades. You're gonna get a little bit more rust resistance with this type of steel. I would argue slightly better edge retention as well, but it will not be as tough. So if you're really hard on your blades or you just want like a more tough, steel, um, then the ADCR V2 will be tougher from my experience, but this Sleipner is an excellent steel, 
excellent, excellent steel. And this is uh, gonna be a really cool blade that we'll do a full video on soon. But that's just, you know, another option that's coming onto the market around that same price point, but giving you a little bit more rust resistance than these other blades. And then finally here, uh, we got the Winkler in partnership with Case right there. Blamo Skinner, 80 CRV2. Full tank construction. This is a, not going to be more of a Scandi based blade. This is gonna be a high, full flat grind basically. There's a slight, you know, right there. And a couple different handle variants. Uh, this one though, just to show you how wide leather sheath that is ambidextrous. It's a little bit longer, a little bit, um, I guess broader blade in this Skinner, like 300 to 350. So significantly more made America. So significantly more for that exact same steel, but a very different type of profile and a wicked, wicked, wicked blade. So there are just some competitive options for you guys just to consider, think about when you are looking at the Trooper. But guys, it has been a Trooper for me. I have loved using it. This thing is just like such a workhorse, scary sharp, but nice and stout at the same time and very comfortable in the hand and has been one of my faves since I got it for this style of knife, just kind of being like a more brute bushcraft knife. So if you're into that steel or you want to try that steel out, I think it's definitely a great option. And I know it's going to be in my collection and, and grab it and I'll gravitate to it regularly because of its durability, kind of beef to it, but how fine and, fin and able it is to finesse. But I look forward to hearing from you guys. What's your thoughts on this knife? If you own one, uh, give a comment below. And I appreciate you guys so much for coming over and spending your time with me today. Check out the other video popping up. And if you haven't yet subscribed and you're still here with me at the end of this video, appreciate it. And I invite you to subscribe. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.